I may be Theseus, a renowned in Duke. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation, come out with a complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander, and my gracious Duke. This man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou Lysander, thou hast given a rhyme and interchanged love tokens with my child. Thou hast by moonlight at a window sung with feeding voices of being love, and still in the impression of her fantasy with braces of thy hair, rings, and gauze. Messengers of strong prevailment and hardened news, with cunning hast thou fletched my daughter's heart. Turn her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. And my gracious Duke, be it so that she will not here before your grace, consent to marry with Demetrius, I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. As she is mine, I may dispose of her, according to our law immediately provided in this case. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid, to you your father should be as a god, one that composed your beauties, ye, and one to whom you are but as a form in wax, imprinted by him, and within his power to figure or disfigure it. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself he is, but in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father look, but with my eyes. Rather, with your eyes must with his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know but what power I may boast, nor how I may conserve my modesty in such a presence here to plead my thought. But I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of man. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires. Know of your youth, examine well your blood, whether, if you yield not to your father's choice, you can endure the library of a nun. For I to be in shady cloister mute, to live a barren sister all your life, chanting faint hymns to the cold, fruitless moon. Thrice blessed they that master sow their blood to undergo such maiden pilgrimage. But earthlier happy is the rose distilled than that which, withering on the virgin Thor, grows, lives, and dies in single blessedness. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord. Ere I yield my virgin potent up unto his lordship, whose unwished yoke my soul consists not to give so variety. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon, the stealing day betwixt my love and me for everlasting bond of fellowship. Upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or else to wed Demetrius, as he would, or on Diana's altar to protest for I austerity and single life. Relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, yield thy crazy title to my right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do marry him. Scornful Lysander, true he hath my love, and what is mine I shall render him, and she is mine, and all my right of, to her I say unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his, my fortunes every way as fairly right, if not with vantage, as Demetrius is. And, which is more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should not I then prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll vouch it to his head, made love to Neder's daughter, Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry, upon this spotted and inconsistent man. I must confess that I have heard so much, and with Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof, but, being over full of self-affairs, my mind did lose it. But, Demetrius, come, and come, Aegeus, you shall go with me, I have some private schooling for you both. For you, fair Hermia, look to arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yields you up, which, by no means we may extenuate, to death or to a vow of single life. Demetrius and Aegeus, go along. I must employ you in some business against their nuptials and confer with you of something nearly that concerns yourselves. With duty and desire, we follow you. Let us go. How now, my love? Why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there to fade so fast? Be like for a want of rain, which I could well redeem them from the tempest of my eyes. I mean, for aught that I could never read, could ever hear by tale or horse or history, the course of true love never did run smooth.
But either, it was different in blood. Old cross, too high to be at all too low. Or else ma misgrafted in respective years. Old spite, too old to be engaged too young. Or else it stood upon the choice of friends. Old hell, to choose love my other eyes. Or if there were a sympathy in choice. War, death or sickness did lay siege to it, making it momentary as a sound, swift as a shadow, short as any dream. Brief as the lightning in the call I night, that in a spleen unfolds both heaven and earth, and ear a man hath power to say, Behold, the jaws of darkness do devour it up. So quick, bring bright things come to confusion. Then true lovers have ever been crossed, it stands as an attic in destiny. Then let us teach our trial patience, because it's a customary cross, as due to love as thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears, poor fancy's followers. A good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, Hermia, I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house remote, seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee, and to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then, steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood, a league without the town, where I did meet thee once with Helena to do observance as to a morn of May. There will I stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee by the Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow with the golden head, by the sympathy of Venus, and by the fire which burned the captain queen when the false trial under his sail was seen, by all the votes that ever men have broke. In the same place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. He promised love, we'll meet tonight. Of... Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? Mom, you have quite Back up. Alright, let's go. Dang it. No time. Let's go, Helena. Helena! No, 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 Bite my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> by a simplest of Venus' doves, by war. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 o